Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and this is our next installment of the Octurian Anthology. We are where we left off last week. We're in the middle of Ektara's um, channeling from Tom Kenyon. If you missed the episode from last week or any of the prior episodes, it is in that playlist, Understanding the Magdalene. Again, these channelings drop every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube and then later in the day on our other websites and platforms. So we again are going to pick up with Ektara's channeling from the Ecturian Anthology. We're starting today with your human potential. And once again, before we get into this, I just am being reminded to tell you guys. So I've had some, I've had a couple of people request that I just read and don't give commentary. Um, you can probably find these books on Audible if you just want somebody to read them to you. However, that's not the point of this. I'm going to be giving my commentary on this. And that is because long before I was on YouTube, I was the only or still am the only female authorized Ashtanga teacher here in the state of Georgia. I've been studying spirituality and spiritual philosophy for 17 years now. And so I do know a thing or two about what is being discussed in these channelings. And so I am going to be giving my commentary because this is what I'm an expert in. This is my field. I'm not an expert in the sense that I know everything, but professionally, professionally, I would be considered an expert. You know, if, if this was a, there was a trial going on and they needed an expert witness to come in and talk about different philosophies, I would qualify for that. And so that is why I'm giving commentary. Most of the stuff that's been discussed in Tom Kenyon's channelings, I have agreed with. And I feel like I've been able to elaborate on because I understand what they're talking about. There's some stuff that I don't agree with. And when I don't agree with it, I give you the reasons why I don't agree with it. Because it usually comes from another philosophy or another understanding that I'm aware of. And so, um, yeah, if you don't want to hear my commentary, then you're more than welcome to go to Audible and see if you can find the book just simply being read to you. Or better yet, you can order the book yourself. You know, it's available. I, I, it's on Amazon. It's anywhere books are sold. You can get this book. It's not, you know, I don't have exclusive rights to this book. So, um, but anyway, I know most of you guys like the commentary, but just for those who have commented, it, the commentary is not going to stop. There would be no point for me just to read this, to read it. No point. I wouldn't, I wouldn't just read it. It's a discussion. This is an, an, a discussion over these channelings. So anyway. All right. So we're going to be starting again with your human potential. This is page 72. Your potential as a human being is rooted in your intergalactic ancestry. Yep. Yep. I've told you guys before, the missing 10 tribes of Israel are your 10 DNA strands that are not active. The tribes of Israel that are coming from Jacob in the Bible, those are the bad guys. <laughs> those are the controllers. The real, listen, the darkness can't create anything. The only thing the dark, darkness can do is steal from the light and invert or mimic. There was an original 12 tribes of Israel. They're galactic. Darlin, that's you. That's you. So let's read that again. Your potential as a human being is rooted in your intergalactic ancestry. And the obstacles of your unfoldment of as, a, as a higher being are perpetrated by territorial manipulation. The illusions of limitations, correct? We know the controllers have manipulated us, but we also manipulate ourselves. That's the second sutra of the yoga sutras, yoga chitta vritti narodaha. That's the Sanskrit, yoga chitta vritti narodaha. Yoga is the nothingness of mind. Vritti is thoughts. Chitta is mind, so the mind stuff. So yoga is literally getting rid of your thoughts because your thoughts don't mean shit. Your thoughts just create limitations and bondage. It's like one of my favorite sayings is don't believe everything you think. Your thoughts are what cause human suffering because you're clinging to manipulation that you think is real that isn't real. The truth through the illusion is that you are a soul. 
the illusion is that you think you are your identity. You think you are your limitations. Okay, we've talked a lot about that on this on this channel. Let us first address your inheritance that is intergalactic and not simply planetary. During the Sumerian period of your history, an intergalactic civilization made contact with your early primate predecessor. These beings, known as the Anunnaki, were on a practical mission. They were mining for gold because their atmosphere had become depleted of this rare metal, which was in suspended gaseous state. Their atmosphere was composed of suspended gold particles mixed with other gases. Unfortunately for the Anunnaki, the rotation of your planet around the sun degraded their biology and reduced their lifespan. Robotic mining ve vessels could only do so much. Now, I do not actually, I don't necessarily believe that the earth is flat. Don't necessarily believe that. But I'm questioning whether we actually rotate around the sun or not. I, I kind of, in my mind, I see things as being maybe um, multidimensional rather than linear when it comes to the planet. But as I said last week regarding this, I take a very humble approach to what the Earth looks like. I'm not going to lean heavily one way or the other simply because I have never, as Bryce, I have never been to outer space. So I've never had the fortunate memory of seeing it from that perspective to know, to understand exactly. I do believe there is a firmament, but that can be in any model, really. So, um, so you know, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, that's one of those things I'm just going to wait when we know, we know. Um, I don't believe the Earth is as big as they say it is. I do actually believe that land masses are closer than they say they are. I do think there is some type of suspension when we fly places. Um, trust me, I've been all over the world multiple times. So some of those long 16, 20 hour flights I've taken, I, I do actually believe we're closer and they kind of keep us suspended. But that's just my opinion. It could change. Um, so anyway, basically, I guess the point I was getting to with the Anunnaki, it, it was the atmosphere of Earth that, that was not hospitable to to them and we've spoken about this before i believe it was with um was it sunat kumara or um maybe it was it was one of the other channelings in this book we spoke about this with the anunnaki and anunnaki this is a very broad statement in my opinion the anunnaki just like saying a hu humans that's a very broad statement there's so many different types of humans there's many different types of anunnaki and we again we have to understand that people or humanoid beings should always be judged by their actions and not by their state of birth. So we can't say, we know that majority of the Draco is bad. We know that majority of the Draco do very selfishly harmful things. However, there are a few Draco that are not bad, that are oriented for good and who help humans. Same thing with the Anunnaki. I think the Anunnaki was split more evenly it's like the Palladians. The Palladians aren't all good. There are bad Palladians too. And we, we have to be very, very careful, especially as we start in this community, especially we've started to really open our eyes to extraterrestrial beings and the reality that they do exist. And so many people in this community are very quick, very quick to say just because somebody is a Draco or a reptilian or Anunnaki, then they're all automatically bad. Well, that's bigotry. That's, that's no different than saying that somebody is good or bad based upon the color of their skin. You can't help who you were born to. These beings, same thing. And so I want to be very clear. Now, we talked about this a lot with the Emerald Tablets, with the Anunnaki. The Atlanteans, which is who we are, the descendants, and I think that's what he's going to get into. We are the, 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 we're the mutts of all of these intergalactic beings rolled up into one. That's where we get our races from. Um, I'm predominantly Lyran, Palladian, and Octurian. That's why, and, and Kentuckian. That's why I'm blonde hair, blue eyed. That's my dominant galactic heritage. It doesn't mean I don't have Siren in me. It doesn't mean I don't have other galactic roots in me as well, but I'm predominantly these galactic constellations that carry blonde hair, blue eyed features. If you're black, you carry more Syrian doesn't mean you don't have Lyran or Octurian or Palladian. You're just predominantly Siren. And this is what the, uh, the Atlanteans knew. 
They knew this. That's that's what a race was. You're, I'm not white because my ancestors came from Northern Europe. That's bullshit. That's not why I'm white. You're not black because your ancestors came from Africa. It's an intergalactic understanding. And all of these different uh, races of, of, of humanoids all make up the 12 tribes of Israel equally. All right. So when the Anunnaki came to Earth to mine for gold, to look for resources here, yes, they did create some they created us, the bad ones created us to be a slave nation, to, to do this for them. Hence why, as we talked about before in this book, why it's really easy for people to kind of fall in line. It's easy for humans to follow the leader because that's, we were created to be slaves, right? That's in our DNA from the bad Anunnaki. But there was also good Anunnaki who wanted to teach us things and liberate us and saw us as a part of them. And if you want to know more about that, I would highly suggest looking into the Emerald Tablets because that's what caused the fall of Atlantis was the bad Atlanteans who were in line with the bad Anunnaki took over and it flooded things out. But there were good ones as well. Okay, so all of us, if you're watching right now, you have Anunnaki in you. Doesn't mean you're bad. Okay, and again, even if you were born to bad Anunnaki, you have free will choice doesn't matter your heritage doesn't matter that it's not that that doesn't depend upon the value of your soul you have choices to make and that's what third density is it's the planet of choice we're in the density of choice all right so let's continue so i'm going to reread that again unfortunately for the anunnaki the rotation of your planet around the sun degraded their biology and reduced their lifespan robotic mining vessels could only do so much looking for a solution they decided to engage the service of some it more some more advanced primates. They manipulated your ancient DNA to create slaves to do the terrestrial part of the mining operation. When the Anunnaki had mined enough gold for their, their purpose, they left your planet. Those early versions of humans, abandoned by the star travelers, began to tell stories about gods who had come from the stars. A being especially a primitive one who lives in the third dimension can easily ascribe supernatural abilities to a being from the fifth or higher dimensions who, as in the case of the Anunnaki, possessed an advanced technology. After the Anunnaki experiment, other intergalactic civilizations explored your solar systems and interacted with early humans. This was in your prehistorical period. And by that, I mean there are no written records other than the Sumerian text. Depending on how you classify intergalactic DNA, you can safely say that over 20 intergalactic civilizations gifted you with aspects of their DNA. A gift is, of course, relative to the one giving and the one receiving. What is perceived as a gift by the giver may turn out to be a burden to the receiver. This is the paradox of reality. From this vantage point, you are intergalactic royalty that's what they don't want you to know the, the atlanteans knew this that's why all these species these extraterrestrials are so fascinated by what's happening on earth right now because collectively we are all of their children and because we carry all the strands of these different dn of these different humanoid galaxies within us we have powers beyond our own understanding Let me read that again. From this vantage point, you are intergalactic royalty, a unique hybrid of a biological primate conjoined with the DNA from very advanced beings. The codons of your DNA spiral operate much like internal and external responsive switches. Some of the codons in your DNA became active when internal biological processes occur. Other codones of your DNA respond to external cues in the environment. Your intergalactic inheritance encoded in the form of DNA codones is responsive to cosmic triggers. It is as if these advanced intergalactic beings that gifted you with portions of their DNA program the codones to respond to future environmental and cosmic triggers. When these codones were introduced into your DNA, these cosmic forces were in your future. Now they are in your present. 
and you are being activated by cosmic forces beyond your imagination. These cosmic triggers are streaming into your solar system from the center of your galaxy as well as from deep space. Furthermore, your codones are responding to the changes in your sun. And I just want to say something quickly. There is construction going on outside, continual construction. If you hear a ha hammering noise, that's what that is. And unfortunately, there's not much I can do about it. So and we know that there's changes happening in our sun. There's actually people are showing pictures of two suns. We know the sun is a portal. That's why I am not so sure that we move around the sun, because I think there's something about the sun we don't actually know. All right. So all this cosmic activity, activity is stimulating and activating your codones of intergalactic origin. Your now has become your future. Your future has become your now. This mass activation of humanity through cosmic triggers is and will continue to release extraordinary latent potentials in the human beings. Although you are in the midst of it and are likely unable to see it, you are in the center point of evolutionary change. One of the impediments of your human potential lies in a narrow perspective on history. Many of your religions have defined beings who were not supernatural, but were in fact simply advanced alien species. The deification of these beings has had an insidious effect upon humanity. If you deify a being, you raise him or her above yourself. You seek to be in service to this deity, for this was encoded into your DNA by the Anunnaki. If you raise yourself intellectually to understand that you are intergalactic royalty, then you will realize there is no one you need to bow down to. You are equals. Perhaps your understanding is still limited, but your potential is hardly limited. The demystification and de deification of religion will wipe away the obscuration of your intergalactic origins to the extent that you are able to accomplish this intellectual cap task you will find it much easier to pass through these cosmic triggers and that is what i've been saying for a long time the big hold up right now is religion that's where the controllers still have us in the matrix and serving the cabal is through christianity dominantly christianity once you realize that the royal family holds a copyright to the Bible, that should be a big, massive red flag that it was written by them to get you to worship them. Before I move to the topic of the Octarian Stargate, let me be clear about our intentions and our modus operandi. As I said earlier, it is a developed attribute of Octarians to value life, intelligence, and freedom. We view our presence in your galaxy as protectors of benevolent intent. This extends to your solar system and your planet. But the situation is multidimensional and very complex. We believe in the freedom of beings to make their own choices so long as it does not imprison or limit others. You do you, boo. Just make sure you're not hurting others. As an observer of your planet for these many centuries, I am bound by the Octarian Agreement. This is a cultural agreement between all Octarians, and especially those of us who are intergal intergalactic explorers and or protectors. We do not directly intervene into terrestrial affairs except on rare occasions. But although you are unaware of it, our starships travel through your solar system and your galaxy in the fifth dimension, and we have stopped and will continue to stop many malevolent intruders. You may not be aware of this, but there are intergalactic battles occurring. And these battles are between those who imprison you further through new advanced technologies and those who seek to protect you, like ourselves and others. We are not the only ones patrolling the sector of space in your best interest. Best interest is, of course, relative to the perceiver. I was about to say something about that. Yeah, this is indeed one of the paradoxes of our universe. And I want to be very clear about this. The thing that bothers me the most about this is where is our consent? 
you know, as my mommy used to say, we were growing up, if you allow somebody to take care of you, you allow somebody to control you. And a lot of people in this movement, in this, this community are sitting around waiting for the white hats to save them, are waiting to get that million dollar check from Nasara. If you hand your power over to the white hats or you hand your power over to Nasara, you are now adapting a new set of controllers. No different from the controllers that we're trying to get rid of. You have to be your own savior. If somebody shows up with a million dollar check at your door, my question would be, what's the catch? What's the catch? Because this is the realm of karma, of cause and effect. Nothing happens just because it happens. There has to be an action and a reaction. So what's the effect? Now, yes, it could have been that before we took life as a soul, we asked for the protection and the help of the Acturians, but still in a lot of ways, they have to back off and allow us and our lower selves in these bodies to experience the karma of the lessons we have to learn. So just want to make that clear, because as he said, that these are that they're it's only relative, like all of this is there's no such thing as black and white. Everything is relative there. It's all shades of gray. Okay. Our intentions are to protect the free will zone of this mutating humanity to protect you via the higher dimensions and allow you the freedom to make your own choices. It is our hope that you will make those choices that elevate life, intelligence, and freedom, but that choice is yours, not ours, to make. We realize that those of you living a terrestrial existence, historically bound and manipulated, may indeed, indeed feel like you have no choice in the matter, and that the outcome is far beyond your ability to influence. Let me speak to this quandary in terms of a biological metaphor. There are certain types of pine trees whose seeds will only sprout after being stimulated and activated by fire. The scenario is very often centered around lightning and drought. A forest of pine trees becomes very dry due to lack of precipitation. The air is hot and thunderstorms form. Lightning often accompanies these types of weather conditions. A bolt of lightning strikes a tree that is dried and it bursts into flames and sets the forest ablaze. And while to the observer it looks like the lightning originated in the sky, it actually originated in the earth. As fire engulfs the forest and burns the pine trees, the seeds of this particular species become alive. They are not killed by fire. And where there is dissemination, new growth appears over the course of time. These pine seeds belong to this particular species that are like your intergalactic codons. The force that set them on their course towards new growth came from the force beyond their control or manipulation. The cosmic triggers I spoke to earlier are like the lightning bolt. Your human civilization, civilization is on fire, and in some cases, both literally and figuratively, that is the case. And I'm going to say this too, because I said this in the Emerald Tablets and all sorts of other readings. In yoga as well, we see the reference to fire a lot, to Agni, the fire. In the Niyamas of the Yoga Sutras, it's called Tapas. Tapas means heat. This is another reason why, and the Hathor spoke about this through Tom Kenyon's uh, Hathor channeling. This is why physical exercise is the number one priority of spiritual development. Because as he's talking about the macro outside, the trees are using the fire to activate new growth. You also require fire to activate new growth. That fire is called tapas, heat, or sweat. You have to, when you sweat, you are creating a fire within your body. From your solar plexus, which is the solar helix of your own solar system within your cosmic DNA. This is why yoga has extreme exercise. This is why the Egyptian priestesses, a priesthood of Isis had extreme exercise. You will not spiritually advance if you are not sweating every day. It's necessary. Animals do it. Animals love exercise. They dogs sweat through their tongues. That's why they pant and they love it. A dog is never upset about going for a run. You use the fire within your body to clean out old stuck energy in order to activate and create new patterns of new energy that's been dormant. I'm not saying that you have to be an Olympic athlete. I'm not saying you have to have a six-pack. 
What I am saying is there is no excuse to not even just go walk, power walk for 30 minutes. To get your body, to get your energy moving. That's why your soul came into this body, was to experience it. That's the friction, right? That's the heat. That's the friction. I'll say it again. I've said it before. Speaking of using a fire, a match. You have a match. Everybody knows what a match looks like. A match on its own has everything it needs to light. But it can't light on its own, can it? It has to be struck against the matchbook. That striking against the matchbook, that friction of that strike is what causes the, the flame to appear. You got to do the same thing with your body. Just like the pine trees that he's speaking about, the same has to be done to your body. You have to use the fire within your own solar plexus, your helios, your sun, to burn up old stuck energy to open new pathways, new values, in order to start the process of activating your dormant DNA. Again, it's not about punishing your body. It's not about trying to get get into skinny jeans. That's a benefit and added benefit of what happens. But the main point, main reason why I exercise is for spiritual purposes. It's also going to pull up the shadow side. It's going to pull up your, your, it's going to challenge your ego. Nothing's going to challenge the ego quite like exercise. Nothing's going to humble you quite like exercise. It's going to get you stronger physically, which in turn is going to start to change you mentally. Things that seemed impossible start to become possible. You also release more endorphins in your brain, which changes your outlook on life. Again, I'll quote one of my favorite movies, Legally Blonde, where there is a woman on trial for murder. And Elle, the main character of Legally Blonde, loves the the, the, the defendant's a celebrity aerobics teacher, right? And she knows she didn't kill her husband. And what's the famous scene where she says, now you're, you're, you exercise, exercise, give you endorphins. Endorphins make you happy. Happy people don't kill their husbands. So exercise changes your perception of who you are, where you are, and what is happening to you. It also helps you manage stress. And you've been given a body. Your body's a gift. How dare you not use it? How dare you not take advantage of this opportunity to be in a human body? Anyway, okay. And for those who are new, if you go to my playlist, I'll put the playlist in the description box, yoga and shadow work. We talk about shadow work. We talk about exercise, all that kind of stuff. I'll put that down in the description box as well. The cosmic triggers I spoke to earlier are like the lightning bolts. Your human human civilization is on fire, as we're reading this again. In some cases, both literally and figuratively, this is the case. The manipulators have no power over these cosmic triggers, for their origins are not of this planet. And the manipulators who look for reinforcements from their intergalactic hoodlums are disappointed. This is because they are being blocked by our starships and other alliances of intergalactic origin. And I've said this before. The truther community is controlled by the cabal, just like the mainstream media community is. Because they know they can't stop what's coming. Nothing can stop what's coming. But they're going to try their very, very best to get you to not consent to what's coming. So that you follow the 90% of the people you follow are paid by the controllers. They work for the Luciferians. And they're trying to continue because they know that in your DNA, you've been taught to follow the leader. And so you're following the leaders in the truther community, just like the people on the other side are following the the leaders on mainstream media. No different. Two sides of the same coin. No different. So you have to know this in order to remove yourself from this. As I said, it is a very complex situation. Those humans who wait for our arrival in three-dimensional spaceships are wasting their energy. It takes tremendous power to lower lower the vibratory rate of our spaceships into the third dimension. Absolutely. We can accomplish such a task when need through light form technology, but it would be a last resort. What I wish to convey in this moment of our discussion is that your intergalactic codons are being activated and will continue to be activated by the cosmic triggers I spoke of earlier. The unfolding of new abilities in the human beings over the next 100 years will eclipse all previous evolutionary jumps by your kind. Octurian mission regarding planet Earth. I wish now to speak somewhat to the Octurian mission in regards to your planet. As I have established before, as an Octurian civilization, our primary focus is the protection of life when it deserves to be protected. Intelligence and freedom. 
Each dimensional reality has its own inherent potentials and limitations. As fifth dimensional civilization, we have a gr we have greatly expanded sense of reality and our language mirrors this. Our language, to use your terms, is telepathic holography. We do have sounds that we make verbally, but they are activators. They are not holders of information as in your language. So when, for instance, I reference your evolution as a species, in my native language, I see a holographic image in my mind that contains the entire history as we have recorded and perceived it. I can communicate this very quickly to a fellow Octurian. The entire context for a decision can be communicated in nanoseconds. This context is crucial to all Octurian problem solving. We like to know the history of any event or situation and its relationship to all previous similar events and situations. We even like to consider possible future realities related to a specific event. All of this vastness, this holographic sea of information, is telepathic communication from one Octurian to another. It is similar to transferring all knowledge that you possess in all software retrieval systems into the mind of another without any need of hardware, computer interfaces, or any applicable duration of time. For now, when I speak to you, I have to use a more primitive means of communication, and it takes more time to communicate the basics. I kind of get this. I kind of get what he's saying. Some of you reading this written word can have access to the Octarian telepathic pool of information. Let me address this topic before proceeding. If you are of this disposition, you will begin to have holographic images or three-dimensional physical sensations as you read my, read my words. I literally was just saying, yeah, I, I get what he's saying because I, I can see it. I, I'm, sure, I'm assuming you guys could probably see it too in your mind's eye. The more subtle holographic impressions are the actual communication. The words cannot capture the depth. If you do not have an inflow of holographic impressions while reading these words, I would say not to worry about it. When you are ready to access this level of human potential, it will be like a door opening on its own. For those of you who have the Octarian disposition of telepathic calligraphy, as you read my words, focus some of your intention in the pine needle gland in the center of your head. This is the primary location for humans to receive Octarian information. As you keep a relaxed focus, and that is a very important series of words, a relaxed focus, you will begin to have holographic impressions if you are of an Octarian disposition. Having laid the groundwork for the possibility of Octarian tele telepathic holography, let us return to the topic at hand. And before we do that, a quick word from our sponsors. You guys know that I love a good workout. I love to sweat every single day. I work out about six days a week, at least two hours on my yoga mat, doing Ashtanga yoga or doing a bar class. When one works out, their muscles break down. I, I tell my students here in Atlanta, I've been sore for about 17 years. And as we start to age, we start to uh, have a harder time repairing those broken down muscles. Now, a few months ago, my my friend Catherine Edwards introduced me to the product ASEA. I had been offered sponsorships before, but I had always turned them down because the integrity of the company didn't align with my own integrity. But the more I studied about ASEA, the more I studied about the owners, the person who came up with the formula for ASEA, the more I liked this company. And then I started to try the product. So what is ASEA? Again, when you work out, when you rip your muscles apart, there has to be a rebuilding system. When that rebuild happens, that is when your body technically gets stronger. We have in our body something called redox. Redox is this thing that helps. It's a signaling system between your cells. Now, when we are young, when we're kids, before we hit puberty, we have a lot of redox. That's why children are young and healthy and they can fall out of trees and skin their knees and be fine and recover quickly. But as we get older, that redox becomes less and less and less. So it doesn't really matter how healthy the cells are and the cells cannot 
properly communicate with each other. This means that as we get older, we start to feel more body aches. We start to get wrinkles. We start to get saggy skin. We start to get gray hair. For men, this means that the hair starts to thin and fall out. Again, it's like having a cell phone. What's the good in having an iPhone, like my iPhone, if there's no cell system to work it? The ASEA is the cellular system. Now, again, I'm a pretty healthy person. I work really hard on my health, so I wasn't expecting a huge difference with the redox. However, the benefits that I've experienced over these last two months of being on ASEA have been unbelievable. I feel younger. I'm sleeping better. I feel like my quality of life is better. Even my hair, I've always had really thick hair, but now my hair is like gotten doubly thick and it's growing like crazy. I literally just got my hair cut like two weeks ago and I am about to have to make another appointment to get it cut again because it is unbelievable how fast my hair is growing since taking this redox system. My nails are growing faster. Even my boyfriend, my boyfriend who is in his early 50s is starting to thin out at the top of the hair as what, what happens to men. And even he is starting to notice his hair grow back, which is common. If you look at the uh, the stories from ASEA, so many men have grown their hair back simply by adding redox back into their body. There are countless stories of people who have lowered their blood pressure, gotten off medications, cut their medications in half because their body is being supplied with the cellular system it needs to do what the body is supposed to do, and that is heal itself. Now, basically what you do is when you get your redox in, you can hear it's a liquid. It's a liquid. This comes with a little shot glass, a two a two ounce shot glass. Most people will take between four and eight ounces of ASEA a day. I take eight ounces a day because I'm obsessed with this product. So you pour two ounces into the shot glass, you swish it around your mouth for 30 to 60 seconds, and then you swallow. That's it. You can't overdose with this product. If you take too much, your body will just pee it out. Now, when you take the liquid, you're allowing the intelligence of your body to take the redox where the body needs the redox to go. I've told you guys before, I struggle heavily with it, with arthritis. And in the past, I have taken medications for my arthritis, but I do know that arthritis is caused by overthought. It's caused by anxiety. However, medication coming from my doctor only dealt with the issue of the arthritis, not the cause. Well, when I started taking the ASEA about three days into taking this, I noticed that I was a lot calmer. My anxiety had dissipated. And I thought, how interesting is that? How interesting is that my body knew that the source of the issue with my joints was coming from my own mind so where did it send the redox to my mind there's also a topical gel that I really like. So when you take the liquid, again, you're allowing your body its own intelligence to take the redox where it is needed to help heal the body. But with the topical gel, you are able to put the gel where you want it put. I have been putting this on my legs for a while now. It has helped so much with the tightening of the skin, with cellulite, with varicose veins. It's also helped with the soreness of my legs. My legs get real sore from working out. I've been actually even putting this on my boobs you guys now again i'm 40 i've never had children so my boobs don't drop that much but i've been kind of putting it on my boobs too and i tell you my boyfriend really likes that so so this is a really awesome product but despite the the vanity if you have a sore leg or a sore knee or a sore neck you can put this on and direct the redox into the area that is in pain or inflamed and the redox will help with that so i even use this when i'm on my period when i get my cramps i take some of the redox and i put it topically over the area where my uterus is and it it helps my boyfriend again has been putting the gel in his hair which is helping his hair grow back right now currently if anybody knows my boyfriend he is covered in tattoos he has been getting tattoos since he was in his 20 and he right now currently is getting one of his tattoos touched up and so when he comes home tonight we're going to experiment with the gel to see if the gel heals the wound of the tattoo even faster. Now, we want everybody, I want everybody to have the best quality of life that you can have. What's the point in being a human being if you're too sick or too 
off balance to be able to actually enjoy your life, to be actually, to be able to actually work out and have fun or to go bike riding with your children or get down and play dolls with your grandchildren. This ASEA is going to help you and help your body achieve the life that you were meant to live in happiness and peace and health and in harmony. If you would like more information on ASEA, then please text Bryce info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce info info to 321-216-8047. If you're texting from another country, please make sure you put plus one. 321-216-8047 and somebody will get back to you pretty quickly. They can you can ask any questions you like of the product. You can find out more information about the Redox system. The person on the other end of the line will walk you through every option available to you at this moment. They can even try to help you get the products at wholesale prices. So again, knowledge is power, knowledge protects and knowledge is infinite as I say all the time on this channel. If you want more information, please text Bryce info to 321 321- 216-8047. Our mission in regards to your planet. As I mentioned at the beginning of this topic, each dimension has its potentials and its limitations. The potential of fifth dimension civilization, such as the Octarians, is an expanded sense of reality. The limitations inherited in fifth dimensional reality are difficult to comprehend. Limitations to the fifth dimensional reality center around the re- relativity of perceptions. We Octurians can imagine what it feels like to be human. Landlocked in time and space, affected by gravity well of your planet, but we can only imagine it. The same holds true when you think about fifth dimensional realities. We are both handicapped, as it were, by the dimensional reality we reside in. This creates a quandary for the mission. Our mission is to protect life when it deserves to be protected, intelligence, and freedom. This specific mission was established by Sunat Kumara and all of us working in the quadrant who are under his command and ultimately his vision of how to serve the greater good of life, intelligence, and freedom in your galaxy, in your solar system, and on your planet. But we do not know what it is like to be human and experience those constraints that are part of your biological reality. Our bodies vibrate at a much faster rate than yours, as does our entire world and our technologies. So when we observe the aftermath of the Octarian mining expedition, we are faced with a perceptual quandary. The quandary goes back to the fundamental overtone of our civilization. The values of a civilization, whether it is terrestrial or celestial, plant-based or intergalactic, dictate its actions. To violate the fundamental viewpoint of a civilization would be its undoing. It would be like pulling a thread out of a piece of cloth. For we Octurians, this overachieving value to protect life when it deserves to protecting intelligence and freedom is encoded into very light strands of our DNA. And so yes, to answer the question some readers, and so yes, to answer the question of some readers, we Octarians do have DNA, but it is composed completely of light and vibrates at a much faster rate than your DNA. Whereas you have two strands of DNA, we have 24. This is not better than you. It is simply different than you. We actually have 12 strands of DNA, as I said in the beginning. Only two are active. So the values of our civilization are encoded into our DNA. It is not just a mental concept as values are for you as a human being. They are a part of our physicality. They are hardwired into the matrix of our being. As a human being, you possess two strands of DNA. Within your DNA, there are many codons, which are yet to be activated. As mentioned previously, many of these codons in your DNA will be activated by cosmic triggers, cosmic trigger forces beyond your control. Because your DNA was manipulated by the Anunnaki for the purpose of making you a slave race, encoded into your physical DNA is the template to serve and to be submissive to a greater power than you. The Anunnaki accomplished this through advanced genetic engineering. It is simply a technology that was more advanced than yours, but the principles are the same. Once you know how to do it, 
You can go down into the DNA structure of a being, a physical being, a human being, a cow, a horse, a pig, an apple, a carrot. It does not matter what the organism is. Once you understand how to manipulate genetic information in that organism, you can program its behaviors. For those that got this, I've read that um, for people who are narcissists, who have narcissistic personality disorder, this is now programming them to be more narcissistic, more diabolical. It's interesting, isn't it? So the Anunnaki manipulated your ancestral DNA to be a slave race and to serve powers perceived to be greater than yourself. It was from an engineering standpoint and genetic standpoint, brilliant work on the part of the Anunnaki. And I must say that as a scientist, I am impressed with the effectiveness of their genetic engineering. At the same time, however, as an Octarian, I am furious at this because the manipulation has ne negatively affected your life, your intelligence, and your freedoms. And this cannot stand, and this is the essence of our mission. Now, however, this leads us to the paradox and the quandary we face in assisting you. From a fifth dimensional reality, we have to figure out how to best affect a lower vibrational reality without undue negative consequences. Our mission has a two-fold application, two parallel strategies. I will speak first to the, the technology agenda of our starships, and then I will speak to the micro tunnels strategy. Our starships are patrolling this sector of space to protect you from interference by the nefarious ones who would, in some way or other, continue the Anunnaki agenda. And by that I mean they would imprison you as slaves and make you subservient to their will. It would serve little purpose for me to describe our encounter with these intergalactic tyrants because for you, it would be stuff of science fiction. So the strategy of our starship system is pr to protect this space around your solar system and specifically your Earth from intervention by nefarious technologies that are off planet. And from time to time, this involves skirmishes and at other times outright battles. Fortunately, we possess the most advanced technology that we are aware of anyway. The second strategy is to activate more micro tunnels of communication with human beings. This is for the purpose of opening your minds to perceive new possibilities beyond the shroud of servitude, stupidity, and imprisonment that surrounds your planet. I am referring now to a physical shroud. I'm not referring to a planetary tone that is generated through your religions and other institutions, so, shall we say, that continue the Anunnaki, Anunnaki agenda. Your religion is part of the New World Order, you guys. Christianity, listen, listen, Linda, for those in the back who didn't hear, are you listening? Christianity is part of the New World Order. It's part of the Anunnaki agenda. If you are still going to church, if you are still putting Jesus is my savior, Jesus means hell Satan, by the way, on your Facebook statuses, you are serving the cabal. Yeshua was his name and he wasn't here to save you. He was here to teach you. He was a teacher. Teach you how to save yourself. Wake up. So when I speak to you in these words and I say the Anunnaki agenda, I wish you to understand something. This is for those readers who have the Octarian disposition and have been reading my words with some of your attention in your pineal gland. So when I speak to you in these words and I say the Anunnaki agenda, I wish you to understand something. This is for those readers who have the Octarian disposition and have been reading my words with some of your attention in your pineal gland. When I say the Anunnaki agenda, I see the holographic picture from the first moment of your manipulation to the genetic lab through the twisted and contorted history of your species, through the clashes between the renaissance of awakening and the forces that would squash it. The forces that would squash the awakening is the truth or movement. The truth or movement is not the great awakening. It's not the awakening. It's just another form of control and cult behavior. At the same time, I see the holography of your present moment in time. I see how those who continue to confine you, imprison you, and make you stupid do not value your life. I see these modern people continuing the Anunnaki agenda. So from this perspective, the Anunnakis are still among you, even though they have left. 
the brilliant encoding of your DNA speaks to those who continue their agenda. 90% of the truther movement, you guys, 90%. At the same time, there are growing numbers of human beings waking up. Many more, but not enough yet to see through the lives. What the Cassiopeian said, 3%. That's it. When enough humans begin to wake up to their great potential, human history will radically change. And so our decision as Octurians is to nudge along more human beings by opening micro tunnels of communication and giving them access to our expanded sense of reality. As I said, this decision has been made. And for better or worse, these are our two primary strategies. And you can see who these fake truthers are, you guys. Like every time somebody says their channel went down, there's a website you can go to that tells you whether YouTube took their channel down or whether the content creator took their own channel down. There are two tarot channels that have gone down from two different creators where they claimed YouTube terminated their channels. They took their own channels down to manipulate you into thinking that they had valuable information. They don't. They're working for the controllers. And you can see that. You can look up those websites and see. It tells you. It tells you that they took their channels down. They weren't struck by YouTube. They took them down themselves to manipulate you. If this ever goes down, it will be because of YouTube. And you'll be able to check that on me as well. So just don't, you know, as they say, what did he just say here? He said, um, at the same time, I see the holography of your present moment in time. I see how those who can, I see those who continue to confine you, imprison you, and make you stupid. So these these truthers who are telling you that the cabal took, or these truthers who are telling you that the white hats took down their channel, and you can go just go check and see the truth. They're making you stupid because you're just believing them, and you're not checking to see if they're telling you the truth. They're not. They're lying to you about a lot of things. They're making you stupid. I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid. I'm a researcher. I'm never just going to take somebody's word for it. I'm always going to research what they say. Because I own my own mind. You should own your own mind too. Even, even things I tell you. Research, and I tell you this in almost every video. Everything I tell you, research it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. I don't want to be your leader. I, listen, I can't. I have a hard time controlling my dog on a leash. I'm not here to lead anyone. I'm a teacher. That's what people pay me to do off of YouTube is teach them. But I'm not their leader. There's a difference between being a teacher and being a cult leader. A teacher's job is to eventually not be needed. That's my job is to eventually not be needed by my students. Huge difference between a teacher and a cult leader. The demystification of ignorance. The paradox of communicating from fifth dimensional reality to third dimensional reality is similar to a hydrogen atom, which possesses one electron comprehending potential bonds. Much like a human being, hydrogen atoms exist in their own peculiar space. From time to time, they bond with other atomic structures to create new configurations and new possibilities. Take, for instance, the bonding of hydrogen and oxygen. Separately, they are both gases, ephemeral, highly transient, yet when they bond together, they shift to a different state altogether, which you call water. It is water that characterizes the visual qualities of your planet from outer space. From the perspective of space, your, pr your planet is primarily blue. Water, like human beings, do not understand its own roots or its own configuration. It simply moves or sits according to its own nature and outside forces. If water had awareness like or similar to humans, it might understand that it covers about two-thirds of the planet's surface. This would be its reality. But it would neither comprehend the fact that it owed its very creation to the haphazard bonding of two gases. Nor would it understand that third dimensional reality was only one possibility. Only those who view your planet from outer space have the possibility of understanding its orbital nature and luminous color on its surface. Historically, we view mankind's venture into space and your first view of Earth from that perspective as the benchmark of an expanding 
human awareness. Something happened to the imagination of humans who viewed these photographs of Earth from outer space. The tenuous and fragile nature, as well as the exquisite beauty of Earth, became apparent to any but the most dense and intellectually ungifted individuals. This simple shift in perspective of Earth viewed from outer space opened a doorway into greater planetary awareness. This shift in perspective, the capacity to view your planet from outer space is one step forward, but this perspective is still confined to third dimensional reality. The difficult facing you as a human being is one of hypnosis due to the operations of your brain and nervous system. You believe your sensory experience of the world to be the totality of reality, but such is not the case. That is what yoga is about. Your perception is coming through your experience of your nervous system, and don't believe everything you think or you feel because that's not the perception of reality. That's your reality from your past attachments to karma. It's not the reality of the experience, though. That's why karma is neither good nor bad. You label it as such from your own perception. You live in a far vaster, more complex, mysterious, and odd universe than you could ever imagine. Your visual capacity is a result of evolutionary developments in your optic nerves and visual centers of your brain. But these complex neurological structures only sense a very narrow bandwidth of energy spectrum. Unaided, you cannot see the ultraviolet light, x-rays, or gamma radiation, much less the higher spectrum that your science has not yet discovered. But because your sensory experience of the world is so vast, you believe it to be real. But whatever you sense, be it through your eyes, your ears, your feelings, your taste or touch and smell, all of these are but small slivers of what is right before you. And that's where we'll end it today. We'll pick up next week with Earthbound Intelligences.